Nike's most tested running shoe ever? I guess so. It's the Nike React Infinity Flyknit 3. Let's run with it. Now, before we get started, I do want to say these shoes were provided to me by Roadrunner Sports. However, they didn't have a chance to preview this video, and this final synopsis is my own. I'd also like to say please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing. Here we go. Also, because Nike is confusing, there's something called the Invincible, which is a separate shoe. I always get them mixed up, the Invincible and the Infinity. So we're taking a look at the Infinity 3, which is a daily trainer designed to keep runners running. And according to Nike, it helps reduce injuries. They did, a, I think, a study with their Zoom Structure shoe or one of their stability shoes and compared it to runners who use this one, and they found a reduction in runner's injury. So is it that magic pill to reduce injuries? No, I always say you should stre stretch and strengthen if you really want to keep running. However, at least according to Nike, in their research, they say that this shoe will help reduce injuries. The Invincible 3 comes in at $160. I couldn't find any official statistics on this shoe, so I had to kind of scrounge around. I asked Nike directly, and they said it comes in at 9.7 ounces and has the same stack height of 34 and 26. So if those official numbers change when I publish this video, I'll put them somewhere on the screen. But as of now, the midsole seems to be the same, again, with the same stack height, 34 and 26, with the same 8 millimeter drop. Moving on to the midsole, I believe it's the same as last year and still incorporates the React foam that Nike seems to be utilizing on a lot of their shoes. Now React is going to be a little bit more lively, a little bit more durable compared to your traditional EVA running shoe foams. Personally, I like React. It's a little bit more bouncy. Definitely, uh, it feels a lot better underfoot compared to what we're used to from like a lot of other brands, at least in my opinion. Now, it's not the lightest and bounciest out there, but I think it works well for workhorse daily trainers like the Infinity. The midsole also features a rocker geometry, which is very noticeable, rather pleasant, just like last year, and it gives you a nice kind of smooth, consistent feel as you roll forward while you're running. Now, I think this pairs well with the React Foam. The React Foam is not super, super soft and squishy like we see with the Zoom X Foams. So it just gives you a nice kind of consistent feel as you roll through, and I thought it was rather pleasant. And towards the back of the shoe, we do get an updated heel clip, which sits right below the heel counter and goes from the middle of the lateral side all the way to the middle of the medial side. Uh, on the medial side, you do get a little bit less arch support. I believe last year people were, compla were complaining that was kind of poking into your foot. That won't be the case this year. It is noticeable, just not as as noticeable compared to the second version of the Infinity. And if you're not familiar, the plastic clip on the back of the shoe is meant to act as like a stabilizing force. Kind of think mini guardrails that make sure everything's going the right direction and don't get too squirrely. We saw this on the Epic React, the first shoe to ever have React foam, and they've incorporated that design element all the way up here into the Infinity 3. And on top of that plastic clip, or I should say underneath that plastic clip, is an incredibly wide, and I mean incredibly wide, forefoot section and heel area. I believe when I measured this, this was one of the widest forefoot sections I've ever seen on a daily trainer or compared to some of the other typical shoes out now. So this allows you to have a very wide platform to land on, roll through your gait, and just have a nice smooth transition as well as a stable one. We do get a slightly updated fly knit upper that does have a little bit of an elastic nature to it. Now this does fit true to size, although I will say because the toe box is so pointy, and it kind of comes down to a, like a slanted point, if you will, I will say that it is a rather tight fit. You do have a thumbs width at the top, so yes, true to size, but it is gonna be a little bit more snug and more like a sock fit compared to your more conventional toe box. As far as breathability goes, they said they had various zones of breathability across the upper. Personally, I didn't notice it. It's going to be like your more traditional knit upper where it's just not the most breathable. And again, because this is fly knit and it's a little bit stretchy in the toe box, I didn't think the toe box lockdown was ideal when you're making kind of quick turns or cuts. You do notice your toe will spill over a little bit uh, and you kind of notice where it meets the midsole. So if you're playing sports or doing any kind of cross training with the shoe, I would be a little bit careful. However, when you're running, it didn't have too much of an issue as long as you're not making any quick drastic cuts or changes. Now, with regards to the lockdowns, we get further back the shoe, the story kind of changes completely. I thought the midfoot, ankle, and Achilles area was a superb lockdown. Didn't have any, any heel movement whatsoever. And honestly, usually you kind of, you know, you can easily slide your foot in and out of the shoe. Sometimes I didn't have that where I actually had to untie the shoe and get it out just because lockdown I thought was that good. Now they did add more padding in the ankle and Achilles area, which I think helps with that. So it's a little bit more comfortable. The ankle area is rather tall. So you might get some rubbing depending on what kind of socks you have. Personally, my ankle socks kind of come up my Achilles. So I didn't have that, but I noticed on lower cut socks, you do get a little bit of rubbing around the ankle and Achilles area just because it is so robust. So depending on what kind of socks you have or kind of your foot shape, that might be an issue and just because it is straight up uh, and 
that helps provide a good lockdown, but it will kind of interact with your Achilles now and then. So just make sure you're wearing the right socks. And then with regard to the heel counter itself, it's rather sturdy. It kind of interacts with a plastic clip at the bottom, um, rather firm, uh, keeps everything well contained. I thought the lockdown, the heel and ankle and Achilles area and midfoot was rather good. And tying into the good fit story is the laces. Yes, I did that pun on purpose. We still get the flywire cables down the midfoot cage. Again, helps with that secure fit. And the big change here is the tongue. So the tongue, really thick, really well padded didn't have any issues it is rather wide comes up a little bit high so that might be an issue for some people but the big issue from last year from what i remember is that there was some tearing where the tongue was attached too far up on the i guess the to the upper so if you just try to slide your foot in or try to pull the tongue it would just rip so the tongue becomes incorporated into the upper itself about halfway down it's not a gusseted tongue because it's part of the upper itself and is more free as you get towards the top so you can easily get your foot in and out you have this wide gap but as soon as you get the laces kind of all tied in it really does lock you into this shoe so the tongue i think was probably one of the biggest improvements where people had tearing issues that's no longer the case because the top half is now free and allows your foot to slide in and out and becomes attached to the rest of the upper about halfway down so those are all the basic facts about the shoe let's talk about what i liked and what i didn't like the first big positive for me was the ride the midsole it's pretty much the same as the previous version it has that nice level of bounce from the react foam it's not too mushy it's not too hard it kind of walks the line very nicely and i think for a daily training foam it is perfect it's rather durable it's gonna last you a little bit longer compared to conventional EVA foams and I think the rocker geometry also works very nicely here in this particular setup especially because you have such an incredibly wide base I think again the forefoot's one of the largest I've seen especially with that heel section as well so you have a nice kind of stable platform to kind of roll through on and just feels like a nice shoe on foot and because the outsole is so wide and there is so much ground contact, I thought it gripped the road exceptionally well. Asphalt, brick, concrete, I think it excels in those more conventional areas. Grass, not so much in more smooth, wet surfaces just because the traction pattern is smoother. However, again, on those conventional surfaces, because there is so much surface area, I thought it did a good job of giving me a nice level of traction. And the last positive for me was the fit of the midfoot and heel section. I felt very connected to the shoe, no heel slip, felt really locked in and ready to go. Now, the toe box you do have a little bit of movement but when you're running normally not doing any kind of sharp cuts you know turns or twists you really don't notice it and i think it works well it's not amazing it just works well now the midfoot hank on achilles area i loved how it connected me to the shoe and i think it went a long way in allowing me to enjoy the experience here however this shoe isn't perfect and there are a couple things that can probably be improved the first negative for me was the breathability. They said they had zones of breathability and I wish they would actually do that because it's a niche shoe and it's not the most breathable. It's not horrendous, it's just not great. Get a really thick tongue, everything's pretty well enclosed and that fly knit fabric is rather thick. So it's just not the most breathable. And again, I wish they had or just figure out some way to allow some more airflow and I think that'd provide a more comfortable experience. The next thing is something we touched on before. It's essentially the fit of the toe box. I wish it was a little bit more accommodating or just had a better kind of containment system. Again, if you make a quick cut or turn, sometimes you'll feel your toes kind of sliding over and finding that midsole edge. If they had a little bit more room or some other kind of structure to the toe box, I think it would go a long way in providing a really nice, comfortable experience in that region. And the last negative, and this is probably one of the biggest negatives of all time, is they took away the pull tab. It was on the one, it was on the two, and now there's no pull tab on the three. So if you're a fan of a pull tab like I am, it's no longer there. So I know it's a minor thing and it's probably now a lighter shoe, but the pull tab is gone. So where does that leave us? Well, I think the Infinity 3 works really well. It's a nice update from the V2, namely because the tongue will no longer tear on you and it is attached to the upper about halfway down. Plus we get a little more padding in the ankle and Achilles area, which provides a nice secure lockdown in that region. And as far as the midsole and the ride, it's about the same as last year very smooth has a nice level of bounce and cushioning with that react foam which i am a fan of it's just a nice kind of fun fashionable shoe that works well for a lot of miles uh, especially for a daily trainer however if you're someone who wants a daily trainer it's a little bit lighter a little bit more versatile more breathable and has more room in the toe box i would probably go in a different direction i don't think any of the flaws here are fatal especially because they did fix the tongue issue and i think it's a good shoe but it isn't perfect i realize it might not be for everyone especially because you do get that really dense thick knit upper which if you're I don't know someplace it's extremely hot and humid that might be an issue but overall really fun shoe to run in I think it looks really stylish I'm calling this the watermelon colorway and it provides a very similar experience to last year very smooth very nice well cushioned with that react foam well, that concludes my review. Let me know what you think of the upper. Do you think they should go with a more traditional mesh upper that's more breathable? Are you happy with the setup here? And do you think this shoe actually reduces injuries? Let me know in the comments. Well, I'm Ryan from Ryan's Running Reviews. Hope you guys have a great day. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks.